exhibit on size and scale. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is Scott Schweikert. He is the curator of art and civilization for the Reading Public Museum. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Jill. We're talking about a traveling exhibit, and it's a really unique perspective on a medium that we associate with everyday objects, including teacups and dishes, but this is all about non-utilitarian uses of ceramics. That's right. Uh, the work of John Kaneko, the feature artist for this exhibition, does that. It challenges our preconceived notions about the utilitarian purpose of ceramics. Uh, his sculptures in many cases are more than six feet high, weigh uh, 600 pounds, 900 pounds, so there are some uh, some preconceived notions that, that will be challenged with this show. And the artist is an artist still working today. He's primarily based sure. out of California, and this really gives an indication as to his life's work, his, his collective experience. Right. Now, you mentioned size and scale and weight and the usage of ceramics. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about a 900 pound head. <laughs> right. Well, it, it causes obvious problems when you're thinking about how in the world do you kiln fire or something like that. Let alone load it into Let the museum. Let alone load it into the museum, right. So we, uh, we do have a, a, a freight elevator that can accommodate it. It's, it's an old one, it's from the 20s, but it's large enough. Uh, but we'll have to have riggers for this uh, because of the weight and because of the, uh, the, the size and volume of these. But uh, for Kaneko constructing these, it, that's another challenge. He uses clay slabs that are several inches thick, uh, and he builds these forms that take over a month to dry. Um, some, some, of them, um, some of them take three months to dry, and then some of them take more than a month to fire. Uh, and, you know, the kiln is one of those things where you never know if it's going to uh, it come out intact or not. So you can ima imagine the amount of work that goes into these and then to have it crack or, you know, to have something go wrong in the kiln. It's, it's, the, it's a risky uh, artistic medium, that's for sure. And we saw one of his closed forms that he's also known for as well. In addition to the size and scale uh, on, on the extreme side, when you talk about a 900-pound head on top of a table that weighs another 100 pounds or so, some of the objects are actually quite small. Right. Some of them are, are uh, exactly sort of table size. Uh, he calls them slabs or chunks, giving a nod to the medium itself, the sort of form from the earth that, that the clay takes. Uh, and he's also known for his kind of calligraphic glazes and for his energetic surfaces, uh, patterns and stripes, uh, and lots of colors. Uh, and he's, uh, he's a really dynamic artist. And we, we've seen everything from sculpture to uh, paintings and drawings. Talk to us about what we're seeing right now. Right. That is one of the dangos, uh, the, the so-called sort of rounded forms. That's a Japanese uh, word for a mound or a rounded form. And this is sort of what his signature um, piece is, these closed forms uh, that, again, sort of are human in scale, some of them six feet high, some of them as, as big as 11 feet high. He's done installations in places like Park Avenue in New York City, uh, and uh, the, these occupy the park settings uh, in between that major street. Uh, and so these, these are, I think, engaging. People, people can't believe the scale of them. Then they see what the medium is, and they're, they're sort of dumbfounded by that. This is ceramic. This is, you know, how is this possible? So we, we will have some DVDs playing of him at work sort of constructing these, and I think that will help fill in the, the, the blanks for our audience and help them understand the artistic process. Now, this is running June 26th through the 5th of September, so a great opportunity to come out and visit the Reading Museum and right. see everything else you have to offer as Absolutely. well. And we just have a short time left, but why did you feel it was important to bring this artist's work to Reading? It's a great question. Uh, the museum has some phenomenal ceramics in their permanent collection, all the way going back to ancient Greece. Uh, we've got some great ancient uh, uh, Asian ceramics as well. So it, in a way, it's, it's something that's already in our collection, but this point of view uh, from a contemporary artist, I think, again, who is pushing the medium uh, beyond its regular boundaries is something that is really uh, exciting for our audience. So we hope, we hope people respond. And we can see June Kaneko's work at the Reading Public Museum. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. We've been talking with Scott Schweigert. I'm Jill Horner.